Hello and welcome, welcome back, welcome back to Goswick Lane. Uh, it is just uh, Genty and I. The first, uh, we're just going to get into story time here. We're going to talk about real estate stories, and uh, Genty is uh, hard pressed to not let any information out of the bag that's going to embarrass or possibly um, make his clients feel upset. Well, you have to be careful about what you say. I can't even think of any any crazy wild stories right off the end um, that I have. You probably have a crazy story. I have crazy stories all the time, but they don't always revolve around real estate. What is the weirdest thing that's ever happened to you on a showing? Okay, I have one. I mean, well, not the weirdest, but one of my first deals, um, I had a phone call for a property, very unique property in Longview over off of um, Eastman. And uh, you know where that Leduc corridor is? Oh, yeah. There's those condos on the left. Yes. And there's only like five condos. It's actually yes. HOA, too. It's right before you turn on Leduc, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, or... Right after you, okay. If yeah. you pass, if you're headed towards uh, Alpine, it's right past Leduc okay. on the left. Gotcha. Anyways, um, I had a lady call me, and it was a cold call. Never met her. And she was like, "Hey, I want to see this property." So I take her to see the property. We view it. She says, "I love it. Yeah. I want to buy it." And I'm like, "Okay." You know, I was thinking, "Nah, she's not going to buy it." And I said, "Well, let's write up an offer. Can you get me the prequal letter?" She got me the pre-qualification letter, and she said, I actually like it so much, I want the whole house. I was like, yeah, they'll sell you the whole house. Yeah. Perfect. No, I want everything in it. Okay, I like said, all the furniture, all the stuff that was in there, whatever? Everything. That's okay. that's what I said. Furniture? She was like, everything. I want the... Um, I want the dishes, walls. Dishes, towels... Give me the walls. Give me the paint. I want the flooring that's in there. I mean, spoons. Okay. Like we had to inventory everything. We couldn't, you know, normally we do that on a non-realty item addendum. Yeah. But we couldn't do that. So we went in, me and the uh, listing agent, and videoed everything. And she was actually upset because they took the automatic. It was back when the automatic cans were real. You know, you wave, yeah. wave your hand in front of it. Like a can opener? Trash can. Oh, trash can. Oh, those are cool. And so... She was so upset about it. I was like, just don't worry about it. I'll send you on Amazon. So, so she it bought it. Amazon. She ended up closing that everything. deal, and she took everything in that property. Everything. I mean, I was surprised. And I've never had another deal like that. I've had, you know, like your... Yeah, we sold one with most everything. In like it. property, but... But we didn't have to inventory. It wasn't that big a deal. I mean, or it's did. typical that you do unless you've got two agents that really, really trust each other or you have a buyer or seller who's specific about what they're trying to do. The okay. big, the, I mean, the biggest thing with these people is they were relocating. So it actually kind of worked out well for them. Mm -hmm. But also in another case, they had a lot of very sentimental things that they wanted to keep. Okay. So I've got, uh, I've got some Airbnb stories that are just really interesting. I don't know if maybe I told some, I can't remember. Yeah. uh, Courtney and you have told me a couple of those stories. Just I mean, th- anytime you're dealing in real estate and people, anytime you're dealing with people, people. Yeah, I mean, I've been cussed out. I mean, yeah, you know, when appraisals come in low, uh, I, it's my fault. And, and I, I get the frustration with people. I think that the the frustrating part is you have a lot of things that are changing in one short period of time. Mm-hmm. And I always tell my clients, if you're moving and then – you have to move kids with you, and you've got to sell your property, and it's contingent. It's just very frustrating. It's not HGTV or right whatever you see on those TV shows. Well, those <laughs> things are definitely edited. Yeah, they are. They're definitely edited. What is the biggest mistake you've made on a deal? Like all uh, your all your fault. Like maybe maybe somebody else a little bit of their fault, but like you left something out, missed something, uh, like to- totally like mess the deal up. I have a good one. Um, I probably what was it about a year and a half ago, two years ago, during that snowmageddon or whatever. Mm-hmm. Whenever we had those bad storms, uh, I have a client who uh, he's not going to care, but we went and looked at this property, South Longview. During that, it took us like an hour to get there because the roads were so bad. Because the snow. Uh, yeah. But I told him, "Hey, yeah, I'll, I'll ride with you. Go look at it." Well, he said, "I want to buy it." 
And I said, okay, I, when I get back to the office, we'll write it up. He's like, no, I, I want you to write it in the truck right now. And I was like, uh, I don't know. Yeah. You know, writing a full offer for my phone is probably not smart. He's like, dude, I just don't want anybody else to get to it. And I was like, uh, okay. So I did it. He wanted to offer 400 Okay. I wrote it for the listing price because it was on my phone. Which was? Four twenty five. So twenty five grand mistake. What happens? I didn't realize it till like two days in. We we were starting the option period, and so you offer accepted. And the problem is, he didn't want to back out at four twenty five. No, he didn't want to back out at all. I was like, well, hey, look, you know, he's like, I want the house, but I wanted four hundred. Yeah, dude. right. Yeah, and you know, that was one of those deals where it was all my fault and could you have backed out in the option period and oh, yeah. re reoffered? Yeah, but they four? wouldn't have taken it. Oh, okay. You well, know, then I, I already have... I, I I talked about that with the other agent. They wouldn't have taken it the first time anyways then. Correct. Okay, so it wouldn't have mattered. But that could have been a big like no, you get but to you the get closing your, table. You get yourself in a pickle. He thinks you got it for four hundred. It's listed four twenty five. Yeah. I made a mistake and wrote it for four twenty five because I was writing it on an iPhone screen. It's hard. My phone's on the TikTok deal. Those, but are, those are for computers. Those are for computers. And and he told me, he was like, dude, I'm not laying all the blame on you. He's like, I, you told me you didn't want to do that. Yeah. And I pressured you into doing it. Yeah. But um, we worked through it, and and I ended up selling it for significantly more down the line. So Did you really? Mm -hmm. What did you end up selling it for? I'd have to go back and look and see. It, it got him out of it. Okay. So did he buy it at four twenty five? Oh yeah, he did buy it. Yeah, okay. He wanted the house. He, yeah, he loved the house. And then and he made money. That's on well. It. I mean, that's what he said. He said, I mean, if it was four twenty five, I would have bought, bought the house anyways. Yeah. Okay. So he wasn't going to let the twenty five grand. But yeah, for me, that was just like a gut punch. I yeah. was so upset with myself and mad at myself, and just how could I make a, that big of a mistake? Man, we've you made know. some. We've we've got some properties up in uh, St. Louis that we're working on flipping right now, and we had some mix-ups with the contractors and just uh, some check-ins on what progress was being done, what where we were at, pulling draws, blah, 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 put a little bit of our money into it to keep the process going because the draws weren't fast enough. Well, we made about a... Uh, I really don't even want to say how much money, <laughs> the mistake we made on that. <laughs> Tens of thousands. Well, here's the thing, and I tell people this with within business, we're not employees we're working nine to yeah. five. You're the you're the guy that, who has people under you that you're responsible to pay. And so my brain never shuts down. I don't have a, a you know being Paige. Paige helps me a lot, and so you know does that put a little bit of a weight on me to know that. I've got to get her paid and all that, mm -hmm. yes. But it's not yeah. 20 people like it was with my other business. Yeah, 25. that's hard. It's really hard to manage that many people. But you got to risk. If you, if you have no risk or no exposure, mm -hmm. I mean. Then your reward. Yeah, ours was a deal where the contract, the like the contractor, just time-wise, he worked, he worked it where he, he ran off with the money. That's what happened there. Well, if you're not like, often. yeah, it does. And if you're not like really paying attention, this is a guy we've done three or four deals with. And we we felt comfortable with him. He had done his job until he didn't, and then when he didn't, it was big. Yeah. Um, I'm sure he had some life stuff going on or whatever, but it's still not an excuse to steal people's money. And that was in St. Louis. Yeah, yeah. Now, other I mean, than that, we've had and we, and, you know, fortunately, we're still okay on that deal where you know we'll break even, and make a little bit of money, um, but it's just not what it what it should have been. And that's, you know, you roll the dice as an investor, as a, as a real estate person. You're going to roll the dice, and maybe you get a great deal. Maybe you get hammered on, on a contract, or maybe you get into a deal that you're rehabbing, and you get hammered on a foundation that needs twenty five grand to work versus twelve, which you might have thought, you know. Mm -hmm. So the more we do this and the more experience and exposure we get, the, the more we learn. Like, I've still got – this is, this is the last time this is going to happen to me, but putting light switches on the wrong side of the door. On a rehab or a build. <laughs> it's the last time this is going to happen. So whenever you open the door, like if you were to open this door and it opened right. this yeah. way, it should the be light switch, side. Like I've got two in a recent property that the light switch is behind the door after you open it. Just one that I'm selling? No. No, we actually moved some of those. Yeah, okay. So, 
But part of that, a lot of that, you know, what is to be learned? What lessons can we take from that? Well, I didn't give a, a plan to my electrician, nor did I walk around with him and tell him. I just assumed he knew. Okay. Mostly my fault. He can take some blame. You know, you know, which, the doors were there. But, right. um, but how can, who cares if, if that guy does it right? If I don't catch it, I can't expect what I don't inspect. Right. So, yeah. Well, and you learn you learn lessons with that. I think you learned a lesson on another one that you, you've done recently. But you, I always tell people in real estate, if if I'm not paying for it, then I'm not learning anything. Yeah. And it, on a bad deal, people are like, "I'm sorry that you lost that deal." But don't be sorry I lost a deal. I learned something from that. If it's a hard deal, I'm sorry it was so hard. No, the hard deals are the ones that I learned from to make them easy the next time, so I know That's right. more. You le- you can learn when you lose money on something. You learn you learn quick. You learn a lot, especially if you're half Indian. <laughs> <laughs> we you don't, said that. That's racist. We don't towards your to, own culture. <laughs> we don't want to. Well, I don't want to lose money. Nobody wants to lose money. No, nobody does. And not, you know, money's not the end all be all, but it is a, a it's a, a tool. It's a tool in your tool belt, and one of the main ones. We appreciate you joining us today. We're going to hop back in. Where's the cliffhanger for the next episode? I don't think we have a cliffhanger. We're winging it today. I do have two or three people lined up. I just run it on a short window yeah. this week and last week. Got a lot of stuff going on, so I need to get those people scheduled in. Um, I have a uh, Airbnb uh, property manager who's going to be coming on. That'd be um, good. She's got a lot of knowledge. I've actually sat and just talked to her you know, for 30 minutes, an hour, just about different stuff. So she's got a lot of intel really big in the market. So she'll she'll be on probably uh, next week or the week after. And, awesome. And uh, uh, I've got probably, like I said, two two to three people lined up. Yeah. And, so. That's good. All right, stay tuned for episodes coming up. Uh, we'll do one more. Um, so we'll be live. Uh, just watch it next week. Uh, remember, love God, love others, and let your work reflect that. We'll catch you on the next one.